So today I'm going to give you a quick idea of how to do a lab write-up, lab we did in class. Um, the chemical was the chemical presented in class, maybe magnesium sulfate, heptahydrate. I'm going to use a different chemical, 10 Roman numeral 2 chloride dihydrate, uh, just as an example of the chemical, and um, run through some fictitious data that I invented, uh, but you can use this for the lab write-up. Okay, so remember we had a, an empty dish that was weighed. It's called the tear. Um, you're supposed to subtract this weight off from the weights of the uncooked and cooked, and so I already did that here. Uh, so I'm not worrying about subtracting off the tear. Uh, so then after you put chemical in it, you weigh it again uncooked and uh, subtract the tear. I got 21.1 grams of everything, including the water. Then when I cooked it, the mass went down, the water left, and I ended up with uh, 17.9 grams of the 10 Roman numeral 2 chloride without the water. So obviously the amount of weight that was lost, 3.2 grams when you subtract, was the weight of the water lost. Okay, so this is the entire uh, lab data that you need, and so all the calculations involve this. Uh, just so you know, the formula weight comes from the periodic table, the mass of 110, two chlorines, and four hydrogens and two oxygens, or two waters as it is. The two waters would be 18 times two or 36 grams per mole. Uh, the total here is 225.63. Uh, so here you have uh, the data from the periodic table, which goes into determining uh, what the percentage of water is in the original formula. Now you calculate that, by taking just from the periodic table the 36 grams per mole, that's two waters, divided by the total times 100. So we get the formula mass of 15.9% water in this formula. Okay, so this is our accepted value, our theoretical value, and we're going to check that against our lab value, see how close we come out to 15.9% water here. Okay, so as the calculations go, in the lab write-up, uh, the first thing we need to do is figure out the moles of uncooked 10 Roman numeral 2 chloride dihydrate. And the way you get that is you take the original mass of the sample, that's uh, 21.2 grams, and we're going to divide that by the molar mass of the entire um, formula weight, 225.63 grams per mole. Okay, I calculated that to be... 0.0939 moles. So that is the theoretical total uh, number of moles in our original sample here. Let's compare that with the amount of moles of uh, 10 2 chloride we had in the cooked sample. So now that calculation is going to be this mass here, 17.9. Grams. I'm going to divide that by uh, the molar mass of just the 10 Roman numeral 2 chloride, which is less than this, having subtracted off, subtracted off the water, 189.63 grams per one mole. Okay, so the calculation for that is 0 0.0944 moles. Notice the, the similarity between this number and this number here. They should have been identical had we had exactly the right amount of water cooked off, but as you can see, uh, they're not quite the same. Okay, so continuing on, what's the percentage of water in the cooked sample? So to get a percentage of water, we take the, the weight of the water here, divided by the total weight, 21.1 grams times 100. This is the percentage of water in the original sample. It came out to 15.2% water. Now this is our lab value here. And that is different than the theoretical value on the periodic table. It's very close though. So we're going to compare those two, see how close we come to, to an exact amount there. How many moles of water were in the cooked sample? So this is a number of grams of water. And then to get moles of water, we have to divide by the molar mass of water. 
there are 18 grams of water and one mole of water. The number of moles of water came out to 0.177 moles of water. Again, it's the mass of the water divided by the periodic table value for the molar mass of water, which is 18 grams per mole. Now this calculation is the ratio of moles of tin Roman numeral two chloride to water in, in our uh, experimental sample as compared to this amount. So if you notice here, you have a ratio of one, and we're gonna say mole of this material to two moles of this material. That's the ideal amount in the formula. However, in the lab, it's not gonna be exactly that because we ended up having a little bit less water cooked off than the theoretical amount. So how much did we discover in the lab? What ratio of water to tin two chloride? Now to get that, we take the moles of tin two chloride in our sample right here, 0.09, four four moles of tin Roman numeral two chloride. And we're gonna compare that with the number of moles of water we calculated, which is this amount right here, 0.177 moles of water. Now these two numbers, we're going to relate to these two numbers. And the best way to do that is to change this number to one to match that number and then just see what this one becomes. It's a little bit like cross multiply here. This over that is equal to this over that. Cross multiply, it's really x times this is equal to one times this. Or in effect, it's 1.77 divided by this gives me this value. And the value comes out to for every one mole of tin two chloride in the lab, we had 1.88 moles of water. So you can see that it didn't come out to exactly two moles of water like that. We didn't, didn't quite have a perfect result, but then exactly how close of a result did we have? The way we figure that out is calculate the percentage of error. So I'm going to calculate how far a percentage off is this from our experimental result here. What I do is I take the accepted value from the periodic table minus the value we got in class in our lab. These are both grams. And I'm going to divide that by uh, the total theoretical. This is absolute values. You, don't, you can't have a negative value here. So if you come out with a negative value in their subtraction, let's say this number is bigger than that, just make it positive through absolute value. Okay, that results in the percentage of error, which in this case was 4.4% error.